Hello world! So a couple of years ago I started this super ambitious project called the Financial Genome Project. Uh, the goal was to trace the financial world and all the financial genome and trace it to all the relationships for like power and influence and politics. And, and the goal was to help somebody say, hey I want to buy a house and see how that affects the financial genome and to see all the pressures like tax it, property taxes and um, all the things that require buying a house um, how does that influence you? Well uh, it was too much and it just became a blog as you can see here I just have some long articles that barely any people uh, read and uh, I didn't enjoy writing the articles so I kinda mothballed it. The true goal is to create something that uh, programmatically and I can just pull data off the internet and it automatically populates and that's the true goal and so in the previous video we explored the dash by plotly library and uh, in this video we'll be web scraping with beautiful soup saving the data in an access database um, and then pushing it to a dash table so let's check that out but first Welcome to the 154th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in Dash because I want to do a lot more videos about it or if you want to continue watching me build my own digital assistant. Alright so let's hop into the code. So I live in North Louisiana and we have these uh, positions, we have a mayor and we have the city council who's in charge of certain things but then we also have commissioners um, and so in the city adjacent to me they're called Caddo commissioners and then where I live it's police jurors so I know it's really weird it's the way they do taxes um, and it creates uh, more problems than I think it solves I guess and so what we have here is this um, Caddo Parish Commissioner's site and then it has a URL to each of the 12 districts. Alright so what I want to do is uh, well, uh, go to Beautiful Soup, collect all their data so their last name, their first name, the district they're in and the URL so this you know this is a URL to their own biography page then I want to save that into a data frame uh, and then read it into this uh, dash um, table so let's see so I have an access database called master and in it I have a, war a table called politics which is currently empty. All right, so that's that. And now let's run this. So it's going to automatically go to the web page, save the data, save it to this database. Then we're going to read that database and then and put that into a data frame. And then we are going to push it to this plotly uh, table. So let's run this. it's going to tell us that the database has been updated and then it is going to uh, run this local host all right there we go oh it did it twice probably because I'm recording but anyways that's the goal right here right so here are the 12 um, this is a table that shows the last name, first name, district, buyer URL. And then as I build the database, I want to put the political position too. So this would be Caddo Commissioners. And so not sure why it ran twice. All right. So that is, so this wouldn't be the main page, but you would have a um, page on my website that said uh, local politics. And you can click Caddo Commissioners and it would take you to this table. And then as I run my scripts to update the database um, programmatically, 
then this will all auto populate for me. All right, so let's check out the code. So what we're going to do is import requests because we need that for beautiful soup. Then from BS4, import beautiful soup. So you will have this is not standard library, so you have to pip install BS4 or beautiful soup. Uh, then we're going to import pi odbc and then import pandas as pd import dash so you have to pip install both pa pandas and dash and then import dash table now i covered how to set all this up in uh, video 91 and i'll leave a link in the description so i'm not going to go over how to set up your connection to your microsoft access database all right then I created a function called update Cato commissioners comms. So first you go to the URL, right? So this is the base URL right here. So I save that in a uh, URL called Cato URL. Then we're going to use request to get just the text, right? So it's going to download this and I just want the text. So request.get Cato URL text. And then I want to put it in soup, right? That way it reads all the HTML. So um, Cato soup equals beautiful soup. Then we're going to pass it just the HTML text. And then we're going to pass it the HTML dot parser in a string. Then what we're going to do is go for each detail in Cato soup, which is right here, dot find all. We're going to find a so a h ref class equals nav main item secondary nav item so if you have no clue what html is then let's go to here we're going to right click it and press inspect okay and if you don't uh if you are like me you right click it uh 20 times uh i don't know why i do that but so okay i messed it up let's go back so let's go right click inspect and what we have right here is an A class. So what we want to do is look at all the A classes, which is what we did here. So that's the first before the comma. And then we find this class, right? Class equals. And then you can just copy and paste this right here. So copy the element and it will just copy that. All right. And then for each one of those, I'm going to assign just the text, right? So the detail, I just want the text. So text details. And then I want to separate the details. So I call this separated details. So text details dot split. And we want to split it at this space hyphen space. So what the heck is that? So right here, we have a, um, let's close this right here. So we have this district space one space hyphen space and then the name so what we're doing is we're splitting this two items so what you're going to have is district two in one item then you're going to have todd a hopkins in the next item so the district is the separated details and it's the zero with or the first thing in the list so right now it's district one and then since the naming conventions aren't standard, some have middle names and sub don't. One has a senior. This is a note to me. I had to create some logic to separate that. Ugh. And so what I mean is, see, this is first name, middle, initial, last name. Standard, standard. This is not standard. No middle. This isn't standard. Not standard. Um, and then here we go. We have somebody with a senior. So it wouldn't read this at all. So what I had to do is full name equals separated details. So the separated details is back here, right? We separated the text between the left of the hyphen and the right of the hyphen. So now in this full name, we have all of this split up, right? So Todd A. Hopkins. That's three things in this list right here. Um, so first name equals full name right so we have the full name here into different things is the zero with one so we can admit that these are all the first names 
So the zeroth or the first item will be their first name. But uh, that's where it gets tricky. So if the length of the full name equals three, right? So full name is a list right now. So if the length of that full name equals three, so there are three items in the list, then last name equals full name, the second item in the list. So in this case, it would be the third item. So if there are three items, one, two, three, first, middle, then this third thing is the, uh, what's it called, uh, last name. So this, the third item is the last name, third item, or second in the index. But this one will not be like that. This one will not. It doesn't separate at the hyphen. This only shows two names, two names. This is the third one. So the second index or the third item, that's the last name. So, um, but if the full name equals two, or if the full name two equals senior, then we're going to strip the comma, and then the last name equals the second item, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to find this one only, and it's saying, hey, this one right here, split that, and this is your last name. For all others, so for else, so things that aren't three items and aren't senior, so in our case, if it's just two names right here, then the last name is the second portion or the first item in the index. All right, so that's how we get the first and last names. Then that's what happens if you're a web designer who doesn't uh, make standardized names. Then I want the bio, which is this URL here. So the bio is www.cado.org plus detail.gethref. So what does that mean? Let's inspect it. So right now we have this full detail right here, right? Everything in this A class. Um, and, and what you see here is a URL, right? So what I'm looking for is the detail is just this portion. And all I want is the href, right? That's the uh, HTML for a URL. So detail.get, so for each detail in A, class, this class, we're going to assign the URL, bio URL to this. Okay, and then we're going to save it to our master database. So again, I'm not sure why it ran twice, but um, we're going to go back into this politics worksheet or table, sorry, and it ran twice, not sure why. And you can tell I've been testing this because our ID key is uh, more than one through whatever. But the URL is the same. Caddo 271, right? District 1, dash, 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 their name. We don't care about all that. All we want is this 271, District 1. And that's what we did here. So to put stuff in your access database, you use a SQL language. So cursor dot execute cursor is what we established here insert into politics so we've already established that this master database is our master database so insert into politics last name first name district bio url so those are the columns the values is question mark question mark question mark question mark so that tells it to look here Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So we're inserting into politics this last name, which is the last name we get with this logic. The first name, which was easy right here. The district is what we did in the very beginning. And then the bio URL, which is the last thing we did. Then we do a connection dot commit, which actually uh, puts the data in there. And then at the very end of this for loop, right? or outside the for loop, we print database updated, which is you saw here. But then for some reason, even though I didn't call it up here, um, it ran it again, or it ran it twice. So that's the first thing right here is if name. So anytime you have a if name equals main, this will run first, which is what we did here, right here, but then it ran it twice more. 
Then we're going to do the run server. So it comes back up here and it reads the database. So this is, we're going to do an S, a SQL query equals pandas. So PD dot read SQL query. Uh, this is more SQL language. You got to be familiar with SQL. So a multi-line comment, select last name, first name, district, buyer URL, and politic position. Now we haven't put that data in there yet. From politics using this connection, right? This connection right here. Um, and so it knows to look to politics. And then we're going to put that into a data frame. So data frame equals pandas pd dot data frame. We're going to pass it this whole SQL query. Then we're going to assign columns. So last name, first name, district, borrow URL, political position. I highly recommend keeping the naming convention the same throughout so you don't get lost. Then we're going to return to data frame, right? So this data frame is this now. Then we're going to pass it to our dash table. So app equals dash dot capital dash name, right? So that's how it finds it here. Then the app dot layout is a dash underscore table, which we imported here. Dot data table. The ID, now, now we're getting into HTML stuff, equals table. The columns equals for every name equals I, which is how it counts. The ID equals I for I in data frame dot columns. So all this is saying is that we're assigning a name and an ID for every column in this data frame columns, which is what we established here. Then we're going to use this URL um, to show us the style cell equals text align left. So the default is to the right, which looks weird to me. Then you're going to commit the data to a data frame to dictionary and pass it records. That's just the um, documentation. And then it runs the server. So let's run this again. Let's go to master. I'm going to delete all that data in the politics um, table. So let's go delete. Yes. Save. Close. Let's run it again. So it's going to say database updated. Right there. Okay, it's doing it again for some reason. Anyways, let's check out the URL. All right, there we go. It just did it once. So as you can see, we have our own table with last name, first name, district, borrower URL, political position. It has their names in order. It's to the left. So the default is to the right. So everything was right aligned and that's weird, which is why we put style cell text align equals left, or I'm sorry, yeah, left. And then from here, we can adjust the border or do whatever we want. Now this is running on a local machine. So if I wanted to strip off all that blog stuff from the financial genome project.net and create a cool dashboard, uh, and this would just be one page of that um, and this would auto populate and people can click on each URL to find their uh, cattle commissioner. All right. So I'm pretty excited about this dash. Uh, we're going to keep building off of this. Um, so I'm pretty excited. So please consider subscribing to continue watching me build this. Um, like this video. Uh, leave a comment if uh, you have any ideas on what we should do with Dash next. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.